Tough, no matter with a prayer. Tough. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endure forever. For his mercy endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endure forever. For his mercy endure forever. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. Holy One of Israel. The one that scattered Israel. The one that scattered Israel. And the one who will gather Israel. And the one who will gather Israel. Amen. Amen. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out from the countries wherein ye are scattered. And with, with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with pure fury poured, poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. I read for you Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 33 through 38. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody.
the Lord and live right. He's around. One, one. <laughs> and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged a great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! Alleluia! And a smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen! Alleluia! And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his saints, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for our God, Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints.
Give him another hand. <laughs> Praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody tuning in on the internet, Facebook, what have you, the uh, conference phone. As we get into another Sabbath lesson, not only is it the Sabbath, if you're here in the building, you see that we are... Uh, we still set up for the feast. We was here. I got probably got home about 1 o'clock last night from hanging out. See, Israel, you, you know, Israel know how to party anyway, let alone when God tell you to party. Huh. When God know how to party, he give you a seven-day festival to enjoy his mighty works. <clears throat> seven days. That's why I see people dragging the day. This is just the third day. And y'all dragging already, moving slow. God said, y'all like to party. I'm going to give you something to party for. Huh. But this is a great celebration, the Sabbath in itself, of course, because we're acknowledging both of them, the seventh day of the week. That's why we're having a holy convocation, to recognize the Sabbath as always. That's pointing to the ultimate rest he's going to give Israel and mankind. But not only that, he gave you this great feast of tabernacles, and like I said, today is the third day of the Feast of Tabernacles, brothers and sisters. And it's pointing to the time when the Lord is going to gather Israel from slavery. And that's a big statement in itself because people do not know, even though they know that we are an oppressed people, we suffering, we, we study trying to uh, protest the sufferings that we're going through, don't nobody pay attention that God told it all in the Bible and told of the end of it, how he's going to deliver us. Right. So if we only paid attention to the Bible, we would really know what's going on. We're not in this predicament by accident or by chance. God himself put us in this predicament because of our sins against him. If there's a God, he got to be in control. So this, and this is the season really because this is the season when the Lord is going to deliver us. That's what this is representing. So all, for the last couple of weeks, it wasn't even planned. We've been running like a little series on the lessons and pointing out what's really going on and how it's going to end with the deliverance. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a lesson, slavery and oppression. Slavery and oppression. People don't know that that's foretold in the Bible. God is the one that made sure we went into slavery. And we're still in slavery. That's hard to tell a Negro hmm. that he is slave. we still in slavery. That's why we're suffering like we are. We, can't, we don't have a homeland to call our own. So we're still in slavery and we're still being oppressed. Things have got better since, than it used to be, but we're still in slavery. And then right after that, of course, we celebrate the Day of Atonement, which is pointing to the time when the Lord is going to give us freedom, when Jesus makes his second coming. All these feast days are showing you this plan. The Pentecost, the 50th year, every 50 years they had Jubilee, and that's pointing to the year that Jesus is going to come and do this. He coming in that year. And the trumpet going to sound, so we celebrate the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. The trumpet is going to sound on the Day of Atonement, so we celebrate the Day of Atonement. And then the tabernacle will be fulfilled because he will proceed to gather Israel. People do not know that's specifically at the top of Jesus' agenda when he come back. He didn't come the first time, brothers and sisters, and say that he was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel to forget about us at his second coming. That wouldn't make no sense at all. He going to come the first time and say he only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Now he don't care about Israel no more. That don't add up. No, he coming specifically to deliver the lost sheep of Israel from say He coming to complete the mission because <clears throat> he died. He couldn't complete it the first time. He going to complete the mission as it pertains to, to us. Right. So then we, we started off, we had the first day of Tabernacles a couple of days ago, 
and we dealt with the end of the world gathering of Israel. Because that's how this world is going to end. He's going to take this world over and he's going to gather us from slavery. And, and this is crystal clear to us, but the average person who is even Israelite who under this oppression, they don't have an inkling. They think you, they just going to be a slave permanently, evidently, where they don't even consider themselves a slavery till the police start hitting them upside the head. Mm. Then they realize something is wrong. So that was the first day. And we was here last night to kick off the Sabbath, and we touched on a lesson titled The Aftermath of Our Gathering from Slavery, which just touched on that this is going to be a real process that we're going to have to work out the Lord is going to gather some people. It's not going to be a one-night sensation. It's not going to be over in a day. He's going he gonna to gather us. We're going to be traveling. And ultimately, we're going to have to go to the wilderness first. So we're going to deal with this one today and show overall we're in this predicament because our sins and God put us under a curse. And people don't want to acknowledge a curse. They want to act like there's no such thing as a curse. They want to only claim a blessing. But brothers and sisters, you don't know nothing about a blessing unless you can understand a such thing as a curse. Right. There is no blessing unless there's a curse. Mm -hmm. You don't have no blessing without a curse. And you cannot deny that whatever we, all this that we're going through and whatever we didn't try to get out of it, it signifies that we have been cursed. We've been cursed by God. We can't act like God control blessings, but don't control curses. So we're here to celebrate, to continue this feast. We're here to celebrate that God is going to reverse the curse. So I got a little flow, y'all didn't know. <laughs> the curse reversed. Our home going. See, you go to a funeral, people talking about a home going. That's not the home going. Where it is, in a sense, it's not going to heaven, though. Because you don't die and go to heaven. You die and go back to the dust from whence you came. Right. But they got it mixed up. They, they, they got the home switched up. But the real home going is when we leave slavery, brothers and sisters, because we got a home. We got a home like everybody, like the Polish people, like the Ethiopians, like the Japanese like the Chinese, like the Italians. We got a home. We just don't know about it. But God then told us he going to take us home. That's what this is, feast. That's why it's called the Feast of Tabernacles, but also the Feast of Engadon. So we're going to read a few scripts. I try to keep it short because I know we're going we gonna to eat some physical food as well because we're still celebrating, and we can do it. Some, some people might understand, well, it's the Sabbath day. Well, it was the Sabbath day Thursday. That was the Sabbath day. <clears throat> But the Lord give you allowance to feast. And when he said seven days, he didn't say, well, stop. You don't have to do it on one day. He said feast. Now, we can do it the rest of the days. We encourage people to do it among themselves because that's how it would have been any, anyway. But since we're here keeping the Sabbath, we might as well do a little feasting too. The curse reverse, our home going. And like I said, I try to keep this lesson short, but I can't help it. I tried, I said, I'm going to shoot for eight scriptures. Because eight scriptures, I can go with that. Like a brother told me, Brother Michael, he watches on the internet. One day, I'm going to meet him face to face. Brother Michael, he said, uh, yeah, I see you. You real, you and Brother Boo, y'all passionate about, y'all really believe that. I say, really, it's beyond belief for me. I know this is right. Right. So I can't help myself sometimes. We're going to try to get through it in, in short order so we can enjoy the physical aspect. The curse reverse our home going. Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16, because this when he ordained this feast that's pointing to the end when he gathered us. 16 and 13. Go ahead, my brother. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Uh-huh. After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. See, th that's why he talk about gathered in your corn and your wine because the alternate name is the Feast of Ingathering. But God, this is bigger than God talking about some corn and some wine. He's talking about gathering his people. God is omnipotent. He know what he going to do. 
So he said, you're going to observe the Feast of Tabernacles. See, the point is, we got a home. We have a tabernacle like everybody else. We just don't know. And that means a land. We got one like everybody else. We just don't know. If, if Donald Trump, and don't put it past him, if Donald Trump passed a law and say, oh, everybody go to their homeland, we'd be looking stupid. We'd be, look, we'd be talking about Mississippi. and Where you going, bro? Where you going? I, you, uh, Arkansas. <laughs> but the Polish would go to Poland. Right. The Italian would go to the French would go to France. So on and so on. Russia go to Russia. We don't have a home to go to because of this curse. But that's about to be changed. Thank God he ain't going to leave us in this predicament forever. God is a fair God. And God run it. So we in this because of him. But he, he showed you the end with this feast, how it's going to go down. So he told, he didn't say this for no reason. It's in all our Bibles, and we're ignoring it as a whole. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles. He says seven days. See, that's why we know this is the third day. We continue to observe it, right? We, we, we shouldn't forget that this is the Feast of Tabernacles, should we? He says seven days. So I, after that, thou gathered in thy corn and thy wine. Verse 14. And thou shalt observe, thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. See, it's thou a happy time. It's a time to rejoice. Now, we be having a good time, and we be having a good time also, but we don't want you to get carried away. We still be keeping an eye on people. So don't get carried away with the rejoice. In other words, we have some alcohol. I don't drink, but it's okay to drink. We have some alcohol, but don't get carried away. Because we still got brothers like Nehemiah that know how to put you out. <laughs> and if Nehemiah can't handle you, he getting up in age. My son, Brandon, <laughs> he'll fight, my son, Brandon, he'll fight a bear and a lion like David. <laughs> so don't get carried away. But he said rejoice. You right. always got to tell Israel that. He said, thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. Go ahead. Thou and thy son uh -huh. and thy daughter uh -huh. and thy manservant uh -huh. and thy maidservant and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless uh -huh. and the widow that are within thy gate. It was, it was a time of rejoicing, but it's point to a time when we really going to rejoice when we get delivered from this slavery and go home. He going to reverse the curse. Keep going. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast see, unto the Lord. Thy see, feast. it's a solemn feast to the Lord, but he said you can rejoice. That don't mean you're sitting and don't do nothing. But the, what, what it's about is solemn, brothers and sisters. This is more than like, you know, we do all this stuff for pastors, the past anniversary. You might do that. You might have a good time at the pastor's anniversary. But I'm here to tell you there wasn't nothing solemn about it. It was about a flesh and blood. Dirty, stinking man. <laughs> Especially he a false prophet. But this is about God. We ain't here to honor no man. Right. This is solemn. But we we, we allowed to rejoice in, on this solemn occasion. We don't have to sit like a lump on a log and don't do nothing. That's not what it means. Hmm. Go ahead. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. Seven days, he said, right? Go ahead. In the place which the Lord shall choose. And he told you on these feasts, you can drink wine. He even mentioned strong drink in the Bible. People think that's a sin, and God told you have at it during these occasions. And the place we know is the capital, which is Jerusalem. So we're doing the best we can where we at. But go ahead. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase uh -huh. and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. He said he's going to bless you and he's going to give you something to rejoice. And even in this situation, we still been blessed because he a little sanctuary to us, even in slavery. But go ahead. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. See, he had three occasions where we come together and do this throughout the year. Three occasions. He going to name them. Go ahead. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's the one in the beginning of the year. And that pointed to the first deliverance because it's in the beginning. That's why it's in the beginning of the year because that's what God did back in the beginning of time. He delivered us from slavery. And it was it was acted out on the holy days. 
In other words, they, they, he gave you the Passover and a feast of unleavened bread. Well, he literally passed over our ancestors from death. And they left out and they had to eat unleavened bread. Soon as they left. So that's the first feast. We here for the last one now, though. Three times in a year, all your males appear before the Lord thy God in the place he shall choose. The feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead. And in the feast of weeks. Now, that's Pentecost or also called the feast of harvest. It climax on the 50th day in the summer. That's pointing again to the year the Lord going to come. But. We're not here for that. This is the one we're here for. What's this? What's the name of it? And in the Feast of Tabernacles. The one he was just telling us about. Go ahead. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. And that's all the average preacher would have told you. Just do, You got to bring something. They wouldn't have told you about the feast. Just bring something. But now, go to Exodus 23 because we're going to see the other name. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. So this, this feast has alternate names because it's the Feast of Tabernacles and the Feast of Ingathering. But it's pointing to our home going, us being gathered. That's what it's pointing to. Exodus 23, and when we be gathered, the only way we're going to be gathered, God is going to have to reverse this curse that he didn't put on us. 23 and 14, read it. Three times shall three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Now God is talking. Now notice who this is unto, brothers and sisters. This is unto the Lord. What is wrong with doing what the Bible says? We can do everything but what the Bible says. That's why we are messed up people. Mm -hmm. We go in the church, we got the Bible, but we're ignoring everything in it to follow some man-made traditions. Right. What's wrong with just doing this? If you're gonna be doing anything, you might as well do this. If not, you might as well get rid of the Bible. You don't believe in it. People do not believe in the Bible because they act like this stuff is not in it. And it's not like they're not celebrating that. You're celebrating Christmas, Jesus' birthday. We know it's not his birthday, but where is it in the Bible where he told you to do that? And people go out their way to do it. Mm. Be freezing outside. You going to somebody's house to eat some dinner. Don't matter how cold it is. We celebrating Easter. Don't have nothing to do with Jesus. You honoring a goddess. But this is a feast unto the Lord, it said, right? Right. That's what he said. Three times in a year, thou shalt keep a feast unto me. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. What are they again? They, it's the same ones, but we're going to see an alternate name. I just want to show you that. Go ahead. Thou shalt keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's the first one. That's in the beginning of God's year, the springtime. Go ahead. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as uh -huh. I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month of Abib. See, it lasts seven days. Go ahead. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Okay, because that's the time. That signify, represent our deliverance from Egypt. And spiritually, our deliverance from sin when we came under the Passover lamb. So, but that was that time. That's why that was in the beginning. The same time. So, show you how the Lord is operating. He doing his works on these days. They left Egypt at unleavened bread. They left slavery then. But now, this one is pointing to the future when we leave slavery now. Go ahead. Verse 16, and uh, the Feast of Harvest. Now, that's the Feast of Weeks, or better known as Pentecost, which means 50. That's the second one. Go ahead. The fruits of thy labors, the first fruits of thy labors, uh-huh, which thou hast sown in the field. See, they, they all had a little something to do with agriculture because that was showing how the Lord had blessed you, but it's much bigger than that. Go ahead. And the Feast of Engathering. And the last one is... The Feast of Ingathering. Over there in Deuteronomy, he called it Tabernacles. Here he called it Ingathering. It's the same one. When is that taking place? Which is in the end of the year. Uh-huh. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. See, when the Feast of Ingathering, it's in the end of the year. But technically, it's only the seventh month. What's the end of the year doing in the seven month? Because seven represent completion, and it's the end of your agriculture year. Because right now, 
even to this day, you see the seeds are still the same. This this the end of the summer. We about to go into winter right after this season right here. That's why he say the end of the year. But he set it up like this, brothers and sisters, because it's pointing to the end of time. The Passover points to what he did in the beginning when he saved Israel from slavery. The, unle the tabernacles or end gather points to when he's going to gather us in the end. That's why he say in the end of the year when you didn't gather in your final crop. We the final crop. Go ahead. Verse, thir verse 17. Uh -huh. Three times in a year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. See, he said it again because everybody had to show up. Maybe the female had a condition she couldn't make. She could have been 19 months pregnant. She couldn't come then. But now, go to uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. But everybody would come because we read where he said, you and your whole household. We got some women 19 months pregnant around here. <laughs> they do any day. Don't drink the water. <laughs> Matthew 24 and verse 3. Go ahead and read it. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? See, now notice what disciples asked Jesus. They knew it was about him making a second coming. They weren't looking for no rapture. They didn't say, tell us when the rapture going to be, did they? There is no rapture. They knew it was about him coming back, taking this world over. Ending this world as we know it and putting his people back on top. Because we've been on the bottom a long time. We was, some of us, Jesus and the disciples, they was in the promised land. At this time, but they wasn't running nothing. The Romans was ruling then. Right. The Romans was ruling. So they had finally got the gist of it, brothers and sisters, that Jesus wasn't going to complete the mission at his first coming. So they started to ask him repeatedly, when, when is it going to be then? When are you going to do it? So they said, tell us when shall all this stuff come down. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Second coming, that is, right? Because he was there talking to him. Right. And the end of the world. This is, this is some important stuff. Because the world go end as we know it. But he already showed you what the focal point is going to be at the end of the world. Because he gave you the feast of end gathering. And he said that's at the end of the year. He going to be gathering Israel. That's the ultimate goal. He gathering his people. He have not done away with his people. It's in the end of the world, though. Skip over to verse 29 because he gave you all the big signs. <clears throat> Famines, pestilence, earthquake, nation fighting against nation, wars and rumors of wars. But then it get down to it. 29, go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Now once tribulation come after that, that's when, the, that's when it's going to end. See, this signal the end of the world. And again, people must think this is a fairy tale because people are not talking about this. They're talking about a rapture. And you miss that Jesus is saying, I'm coming back to take over the world. I'm going to tear the sky up and come down and see you and visit you all. Hmm. And when he come, he coming to stay forever because he coming to gather his people and rule over them in peace and happiness on this earth. You're talking about rejoicing. See, this is symbolic what we're doing today. It's going to really go down when he come back. Right. After the tribulation, the sun getting dark, the moon not giving her light, the stars falling from heaven. And what else? And the stars shall fall from heaven from and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. He's shaking up everything. But then what? Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So like I said, it's not going to be a secret. They're going to see him. And he's not coming to play with him. He's coming with power and great glory. Either we're going to believe it or we don't. Right. This is what the Bible is telling us. But this is in line with what we've been reading. 
because he coming to do what? What's, what's at the top of his agenda? 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They go to trumpet. We celebrated that a little over two weeks ago. The memorial of the trumpet. Because that's what's going to signify the end. Great sound of a trumpet. Everybody going to hear it. Go ahead. And they shall gather together his elect. And the, and the angels going to gather together his elect. <clears throat> Gather though, cause, cause he knew we was gonna be cursed and scattered in bondage. He knew that. He foretold it. And they shall gather together his elect. Where are we scattered at, brothers and sisters? Go ahead. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From all over the world, in 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 short, from the four winds, <clears throat> east, west, north, and south, all over. One end of the world to the other. He referred to it as heaven because he's about to bring heaven on earth when he do this. Because he's taking over. See, we're going home. But now, this is Jesus in the New Testament. Let's go back to the Old Testament, Isaiah 11, and see if it was already written before Jesus said it. Jesus is not saying nothing new. Isaiah 11. This stuff is crystal clear, brothers and sisters. And we selling out for what the pastor say. Some lie he done told us. Hmm. And he begging for money every chance he get and not telling us nothing in this Bible. Isaiah 11 and 12, verse 12. We're going to cut to the chase. Go ahead. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation uh -huh. and shall assemble the outcast of Israel. Israel been cast out, right? Uh -huh. This the real Israel. Those people call themselves Jews, not Israel, because nothing like this has never happened for them. That's right. They haven't got dramatically gathered from slavery. They haven't been in slavery. We the ones in slavery. This is about gathering from slavery, brothers and sisters. This is about the curse being reversed. And we're going to a homeland that technically we don't even know we got right now. That's a, that's a big reversal. You don't even know you got the land, and you're going to end up with the best land running the whole world. That's what it's going to be. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel. What else? And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And gather together. <laughs> we in need of being gathered. And we see, this is greater than bringing us out of Egypt because we all over the world now. He got to gather us together. So he gave you the feast of ingathering to honor it Way back in the beginning. See, God won't let you know. I'm, I'm God. You need to honor me. I'm telling you what's going to happen for it before it happens. And gather together the dispersed. That means you've been kicked out of your homeland and dispersed all over the world. Dispersed of Judah. See, the real Jews still in slavery. From the four corners of the earth. Didn't Jesus say he's sending his angels when he come back, brothers and sisters, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they going to gather together his elect. Mm -hmm. See, elect just stand for chosen. See, he always deal with Israel first. He going he gonna to say some other people from other nations, but his agenda is specifically for Israel. Right. Gather together the dispersed of Judah. From the four corners of the earth, or like Jesus said, from the four winds. Same difference, brothers and sisters. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 43. No, I'm sorry, skip to 15, my fault. 15, because it's going to be dramatic. Just like Egypt, with Moses and Aaron, where it's going to be after the same order, even a little deeper. Go ahead. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. Uh -huh. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river uh -huh. and shall smite it into seven streams uh -huh. and make men go over Drasha. Just like it was with the Red Sea, but this is a different time. This is in the end. This is fulfilling the Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Engathering. Go ahead. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, uh -huh. which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Just like it was back then, but this is in the end. See, the Passover and Unleavened Bread recognized what he did in the, in the beginning. That's why it 
kicked off at that season. This, what we celebrating today, is recognizing what he's going to do in the end, and it's going to kick off at this season. It's going to be at this time of year, actually, when this stuff happens. It's going to be on these days. It's surrounding these days. Now go to Isaiah 43. And when he do that, when Jesus come back to gather us, we will finally be able to say, I'm not cursed no more. Like they had to do the funny video, the dude in church, I'm not gay no more. <laughs> I'm delivered. Well, that's what we're going to be able to say. Right now, you cursed. See, Lord have mercy on, on those that serve them to a degree. But as a people, we still curse, brothers and sisters. We still in somebody else's land begging them for something. Taking a knee so we can get something. Marching so we can get something. Hmm. Don't even know where home is. And the sad thing about it is we don't even care. Hmm. We ain't even thinking about home. That's why the Lord said in Isaiah 1, the ox know his owner and, and the ass, a donkey know his master's crib, mm -hmm. but Israel don't know or even consider. Right. You don't even consider you... You're an alien. You don't have no home. You get, a, you, you get on the ship talking about take me to Africa, you be just floating around because you got to come up with a country. Right. Isaiah 43. Because this started long ago when we defied God and went against him. That's how it began. And you re we always read Deuteronomy 28. We ain't going to read it today. Where he prophesied all the curses he gonna put on. He said, These curses gonna be on you. Basically, like we used to say, like white on rice. These curses gonna be on you. They're gonna overtake you. You're gonna be cursed in the city, cursed in the field. Mm -hmm. Which means you ain't gonna leave down south and come up north and get away from the curse. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be cursed coming in, cursed going out. Cause you won't obey me. He said, They're gonna overtake you and pursue you. Curse, curse, curse. And nowadays, we got people on the, I ain't curse. You got high blood pressure, I ain't cursed. Kids getting killed, I ain't cursed. Isaiah 43, let's see what the Bible says. Verse 27, read it. Thy first father has sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. See, that's what our leaders, the Lord said, pastors destroy my vineyard. Your first father sinned, and your teachers transgressed against me. So what the Lord do about it? Go ahead. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary. God say, therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary. What else? And I've given Jacob to the curse. And given Jacob, that's Israel. And given Jacob to the curse. Go ahead. And Israel to reproach. And Israel to reproach. We are reproached people. We hated by everybody. Don't even know why. I ain't, I ain't lying. I used to wonder when I got a little old as a child, when I got it, because it don't take you long to realize. If you black, you're an Israelite, it don't take you long to realize you the odd man out. Mm. I guess I must have been around seven or eight, and I start seeing what's going on. I say, well, why? Why is it like, why is it like this? I, I ain't lying. Lord, it's my will. I thought to myself. I wasn't even talking about it. I was like, well, why? Why we the nigga? Why? I mean, why? Right. <laughs> And then I found out why. Because the Lord said here, I have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. We are reproached people. We hate it by everybody and don't even know why. Just like I was talking last night, I was saying it's amazing. Like as a whole, you know, we've been, we've been done in and hated by Gentiles <clears throat> and really... See, we, see, we know we, we, we don't have to blame the white man for the situation, but it ain't like he ain't done nothing wrong. <laughs> but we know often it's from the Lord because we disobey. But yet and still the facts is the fact. So, somebody between us and the Gentile, which we call the white man, somebody done done somebody wrong. Now you tell me who it is. <laughs> you tell me who done done who. Have we done the Gentiles? Terribly, or had the Gentiles done us terribly? Simple question. Mm -hmm. It ain't even hard to even think about. But the crazy thing is, we looked upon as the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what you up to? <laughs> I know you're doing something. 
Seriously? Who done done who? Right. But now, he said, therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. We didn't been cursed, brother. So if you can't see we didn't been cursed, you need to do some more reading of the Bible. Huh. Zechariah 8. But this piece is pointing to the good news, brother and sister. The gospel, the good news is the curse is about to be reversed. It's about to be reversed real soon. Zechariah 8 and 13. It's going to tell you just that. This ain't happened by accident. Zechariah 8 and 13. Read it. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen. Uh -huh. Among the heathen. That's the Gentiles, the nations, period. It shall come to pass that as you were a curse. That's what we are to this day. But we at the end of it. We know it because we about to go home. As ye were a curse among the heathen, what's about to happen? Go ahead. O house of Judah uh -huh. and house of Israel. Because we've been scattered out and mistreated by everybody. But he's telling you what's about to happen. As you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, what now? So will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not. Let n but let your hands be strong. See, he's talking to us right now today because it's about to go down. He's telling us, and he has to tell us let our hands be strong because we're we living in tough times. He said it's going to come to pass as you were a curse among the heathen. See, you don't know nothing about a blessing unless there's a such thing as a curse. O oh, house of Israel and house of... O oh, house of Judah, house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. So with that in mind, fear not, but let your hands be strong. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you. That's what he been doing. Go ahead. When your fathers provoked me to wrath. That's why it happened. Go ahead. Saith the Lord of hosts. And I repented not. Uh -huh. So again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Because he about to bring us home. He about to lift the curse off of us. And now, like right now, the way we live, we are cursed. So that's why people don't even want to be around you. Because something ain't right. Something is wrong. Terribly wrong. Right. But it's from God. So, people recognize that. So, you be trying to get away from yourself. You don't even want to live around yourself. You be leaving the neighborhood, going to leave with the Gentiles, and they be like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. If they can't stop you from coming, they about to move. And that's okay. It's still going to be you because they going to they gonna leave out, and all your people going to come, Hey! That curse going to follow you. Right. You can't get away from it right now. But check out what's going to happen in the future. He said, you're going to be a blessing. They ain't going to be able to get, you ain't going to be able to get rid of other people. They're going to be like, we going with you. Right. We know God with you. Huh? You can't leave me. They're going to be like Elisha was on Elijah. You ain't leaving you. Huh? Right. Till you bless me. Back up now to verse uh, 6 and read into it now. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. God is talking too, brothers and sisters. This is what the Lord of hosts say. Go ahead. If he be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, uh -huh. should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts? It's going to be marvelous. It's marvelous in eyes just seeing it, knowing it's coming. And when, let, when it comes, it's really going to be marvelous. So the Lord say, I delight in it too. It's marvelous to me. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Notice we out in different countries now. I'm going to save them from wherever they at. That's why he said, that Jesus said the four winds he got to gather us from. Isaiah said the four corners of the earth. Thus said the Lord, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Go ahead. And I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. You're going home. 
That's what signify with this curse is reversed. Go ahead. And they shall beat my people. Once again, go ahead. And I will be their God mm -hmm. in truth and in righteousness. Uh-huh. Now pay attention. He's talking to us right now because we at the stage where it's going to be get worse before it get better. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong, ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. Uh-huh. For before these days, there was no hire for a man. See, this is kind of the time frame we're in. It's rough times now, but it's about to get much better for, for Israel and in turn for the whole world once he kill up all the wicked people. But go ahead. Nor hire for beasts, mm -hmm. neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in. That's how it is now. Go ahead. Because of the affliction. Uh -huh. For I set all men, everyone against his neighbor. But he about to change this because he about to turn this curse into a blessing for Israel. Go ahead. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. For the seed shall be prosperous, uh -huh. the vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase, mm -hmm. and the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to, pos to possess all these things. He said, I'm going to cause the remnant of this people, talking about Israel, to possess all these things. Now read verse 13 one more time. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen. Just like you've been cursed among these nations. Go ahead. O house of Judah. And house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. That's simple, is it? Jeremiah 23. We're almost done. Jeremiah 23. But it's all over the Bible. This curse is about to be reversed. <laughs> and the real home going is going to take place. 23 and 1. Go ahead, read it. Woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. See, the people say, well, you shouldn't talk about people pastor. That's my pastor. So, look, the Lord talking about them. We just saying what the Lord is saying. Because this is why people don't know none of this. We got all these preachers claim to be preaching the Bible, and they haven't told us none of this. You can't even tell a little bit of this. That's why the Lord said, woe be them, because they haven't helped matters at all. Matter of fact, they are the problem. Woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my past. Because you said, what the pastors? How they destroy? Because if the pastors don't tell us what the Lord say, we're going to be in trouble with the Lord. Right. And the Lord doing us in, because we're not following the Lord. Go ahead, verse 2. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Uh -huh. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them. See, God said, I've I driven them there. But it's because of the preachers didn't tell us what we need to do and we didn't do right. But he said, again, I will gather. That's what this feast represents, Feast of Tabernacles or in God. I will gather the remnant, the remainder of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them. Go ahead. And I will bring them again to their foes. And I will bring them again to their foes. See, this is the home going. Go ahead. And they shall be fruitful and, and increase. And we're going to be fruitful and increase all over again. This is going to be a sight to see. Go ahead. And I will set up shepherds over them. He said, I'm going to set up some good shepherds. See, like he said in Jeremiah 3, some pastors after his own heart, which feed us the good word with knowledge and understanding. See, if you got a preacher, he ain't giving you knowledge and understanding. He wanted these pastors to scatter him. Go ahead. And I will set up shepherds over, over them, which shall feed them, uh -huh. and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. That's a big reversal. <clears throat> but it, ain't, it, it couldn't be those people over there in the promised land say they Jews. It ain't happen because they don't even have no peace like he's talking about here. Right. See, when Israel go home, it's going to be nothing but peace. Praise when this Lord. curse get reversed, it's going to be nothing but a blessing. Praise God. Go ahead. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, uh -huh. and a king shall reign and prosper, uh -huh. and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Not in heaven. 
there's no problem in, in heaven. The kingdom got to come. So this king, which is King Jesus, that's going to reign and prosper, he's going to execute judgment and justice in the earth. And that's why he was known as the son of David because the prophecy was given to David. Had to be his son. See, this is speaking of the future in Jeremiah, and we want to do away with the Old Testament. But notice what it's going to be when Jesus make his second come. Didn't the disciples ask Jesus what was going to be the sign of his coming at the end of the world? Right. And he come, he summed it up by saying, and then they're going to see me coming, and I'm going to send my angels to gather my people, my elect, from the four winds. That's what he's coming to do. This is him. Go ahead. In his days, Judah shall be saved. See, in his days, talking about his second coming, hmm. Judah shall be saved. People have act like Jesus don't care about Israel and he just, you know, he, he's the God over the Christians. Look, the first Christians was all Israelites. That's right. He coming to save Israel. He ain't done away with Israel. He coming to save Israel. So it said, Judah shall be, in his days, Judah shall be saved. That lets you know they not the Jews over there because they not saved. They at least got to worry about the Arabs trying to bomb them right now. See, when, when we go home, we don't have to worry about that because of this right here. Judah shall be saved, and what about, see, he reiterating it. What else? And Israel shall dwell safely. And Israel shall dwell safely. Go ahead. And this is his name whereby he shall be called uh -huh. the Lord our righteous. See, it's due to his righteousness, not our. We're not even worthy for it. He's going to tell us that in Ezekiel. We're not even worthy of this great blessing. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. See, once the Lord do this, Egypt, what he did with Moses and Aaron, it will be a distant memory. See, we don't have nothing like that right now. So we still talk about that. That's the best thing on the map so far. What he did at the beginning of time which the Passover and Unleavened Bread recognize that, right? We don't have no reference point for this end gathering that we celebrate now because it haven't happened yet. But when it happened, it's going to be, it's going to top the charts. And what happened at the Passover and Unleavened Bread with Moses and Aaron when we came out of Egypt, it's going to be at the bottom of the charts. It's going to be like, ooh, we thought he did something then. Hmm. Did you see what he did with them? Them Negroes, he brought them back from all over the world. Right. See, that's the point he's making here. With this in mind, when he's talking about bringing Israel home, he said the day's going to come. They no more going to say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of land. Because that's the only reference point we got. So that's how they refer to God. You know, you want to make a statement. You say, as sure as the Lord liveth that brought Israel out of Egypt. The Lord that brought Israel out of Egypt. He brought us out of the house of bondage. The Lord brought Israel out of the Egypt. Uh -huh. He said, it's going to come a time. You ain't going to even think about that one no more. Right. But what you going to think about? Go ahead. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north Out country. of the north country. Go ahead. And from all the countries where I have driven them, uh -huh. and they shall dwell in their own land. That's going to be the talk of the time when we go home this time. Hmm. That's what this feast is pointing to. Ezekiel 36. We're almost done. Ezekiel 36. And we're going to pick it up at 16. Because we're going to go through it thoroughly. How we messed up. And got scattered and cursed. And how he going to reverse the curse. And bring us home. Ezekiel 36 and 16. Go ahead read it my brother. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Son of man. When the house of Israel dwelt in their own land. Back in the day. Go ahead. They defiled it by their own way and by their doing. See that's what we did. This is why we here now. We right here today, here, we in a place called Gary, Indiana. Who would have thunk it? Hmm. <laughs> but we here because when we dwelt in our own, notice he said the Lord, is, the Lord is the one talking to. The word of the Lord came to him saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way 
and by their doings, what did the Lord consider our ways? Go ahead. Their way was before me as the as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Uh huh. He said they was they was we were so unclean. He compared it to the uncleanness of a removed woman. Go ahead. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them mm -hmm. for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Uh huh. And I scattered them among the heathen. Here we are. Go ahead. And they were dispersed through the country uh -huh. according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. Uh huh. And when they entered into the when they entered unto the heathen, whither they w went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. So the Lord said, We gave the Lord a bad name. When we when we got kicked off into slavery, that was an insult to the Lord. We supposed to be the people of the Lord, and we were so wicked and dirty, he kicked us out. That's why I say, hey, the problem is us. Right. Go ahead. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. But I had pity for my for my holy name. But see, the only reason we still here and the Lord is going to bring us back is because of his name's sake. He's going to have some pity. Not because of us. We're not even worthy. I had pity for my own name. <clears throat> For my holy name, which what? Which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. See, we didn't profane it. See, that's one of the things he tells you somewhere else. We're not going to read it. That's why you ain't known by Israel as a whole. People don't recognize you as Israel because the Lord said, get out of here. He basically said, get out my house and I'm taking my name back because you ain't going to be polluting my name no more. Hmm. So when we first left, people knew we was Israel. But as time went on, we Negro. We Afro American, so we making those names look bad. We ain't making God's name look bad. We make colored folks look bad. Mm. We make black look bad. We make nigger look bad. Mm. We make Negro look bad. Right now, we ain't really making Israel look bad, except for some of you know the brothers know they Israel and they keep acting crazy. But as a whole, we ain't polluting his name no more because mm. we ain't even recognized as it anymore. But he's going to fix it. Go ahead, verse 22. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, uh -huh. which ye have profaned among the heathen whither ye went. Go ahead. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. See, the Lord going to be sanctified in us. In other words, he going to be set apart from all the false gods in us when he do what he do for us. See, this is why the Lord do it. The Lord do this. He did what he did to Pharaoh to let everybody know, Pharaoh, the whole world know, I'm, I'm God. Y'all been playing God. Y'all been playing with God. I'm the real God. Mm. Show me a God that can do what I just did. And he going to do the same thing again. When he get through with this, these heathen, with this world, everybody going to know the God of them people is God. Right. Who else can straighten them Negroes out? <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 24. Uh-huh. For I will take you out. For I will take you from among the heathen. He going to take us from among the heathen. Go ahead. And gather you out of all countries and will bring you into the, your own land. You going home. The curse about to be reversed. Then what? Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you uh -huh. and ye shall be clean. From your idol, from all your filthiness and from your idols will I cleanse you. See, that's where we, we know we got to stop in the wilderness to get... To get this accomplished. But go ahead. A new heart also will I give you. Uh -huh. And a new spirit will I put within you. Uh -huh. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Uh -huh. And I will... And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and ye shall keep my judgments. Oh, we're going to obey the Lord. Uh-huh. Keep going. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. See, we're going to dwell in the land that our forefathers had. We're going home. Back to it. We've been gone a long time, but God, don't forget. Go ahead. And I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. Everything going to work. 
This is a blessing. Go ahead. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, and ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Uh -huh. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your, your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Uh -huh. You're going to say, boy, I was messed up. Like some of us say now, nah, we can look back on how we used to be as individuals. It wasn't like, I see some people now that knew me back in the day, they said, woo, the world must be about to end. You didn't change because you were something else. Go ahead. Not for your sakes do I, do I this, saith the Lord God, be it known unto you, be ashamed and confused. And confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. See, sometimes we as Israel get proud and puffed up like we ain't did nothing wrong. That's what you got Israelites blame the Gentiles for everything. I know the Gentiles have done us wrong, but it's our fault. It ain't like we shouldn't, they ain't got to take no responsibility. And we try to blame for everything. Like, see, that's why we messed up now. That's why we do bad stuff. Because they taught us, we listening. Look, you was bad already. Right. Before they even, you even seen a Gentile, you was bad. That's why the Lord sent the Gentiles on us, because we was bad. So that's what we need to be a little more humble about it. He said, he said, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will call. I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, uh -huh. and the waste shall be, be shall be re, shall be built. He gonna build the waste places again in our land. Go ahead. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it was whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Mm -hmm. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I am the that I the Lord builded the ruined places and plant plant that that was desolate. I the Lord has spoken it, and I will do it. He said the heathen that's left gonna know that the Lord did this. Thirty seven. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Yeah, we asking the Lord to do it for us now. Go ahead. I will increase them with men like a flock. Uh, he going to increase us when it's all said and done. Go ahead. And the, and the holy, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, in her solemn feast. And he even brought in the solemn feast just like it used to be. He said he going to increase us like a flock. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, in her solemn feast, which, by the way, that's what we here recognize, and that's what point to all of this goodness. Go ahead. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, flip over to Acts 1, and we're going to wrap this up. Acts, the first chapter. Two more after this. Acts 1. Because people act like Jesus is not going to save Israel. You calling Jesus a lie if you think that way. If you think he done away with Israel and he just about some so-called religion or people called Christians, you mistaken. The real Christians are those that follow Christ and Christ is about Israel first and foremost. He, he going to deal with other people once he get his own people straight. That's just a uh, 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 a natural occurrence. You got to help yourself before you can help somebody else. Mm. Acts 1 and 6. Notice what the disciples asked Jesus in the New Testament after he had died and resurrected. They knew the agenda. They had a problem knowing the timetable of the agenda. They knew what it was. Acts 1 and 6. What, what did they ask him? Go ahead. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of, to, to Israel? See, they didn't think they was going to heaven in a rapture. They didn't think it was about nothing but what it was about. So they asked him point blank, is it time now, Lord? You know, you've been, we, we thought you was going to do it. See, they thought he was going to do it before he died. They didn't think he was going to die. They missed that point. So when he came out the grave and was hanging out with them, they said, Lord, will you at this time, right now, 
restore again the kingdom to Israel. Why ask a question like that if Jesus didn't just done away with Israel in favor of the Christians? People don't understand. All this, they asked the question because they read all these scriptures we read. And they knew what the storyline was. They knew that was the top of his agenda. But what did he say? Verse 7. And he said unto them, it is, not no, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. He didn't say he wasn't going to do it, did he? Because he going to do it. That's right. He just told them, don't worry about it. It's not for you to know when. Because he knew. See, they thinking it, all this stuff that we about, that's about to happen now, in our days, they, they was wondering if it could happen back then. Huh. And he knew better. He like, look, y'all way out y'all league. Don't even worry about that. That's for some more people down the road. They're going to be woke in the resurrection and see it, but the people living is us. It's in our days because we're at the end of the world. It's at the end of the world. That's why they asked him that question. First thing we read, one of the first scriptures we read, they said, give us sign, okay, give us signs of your coming right. and the end of the world. That's why since he had came out the grave, they said, okay, now is the time. Hmm. Nope, it's not for you to know. Go ahead. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He said, look, this is what I got for y'all to do. Y'all just handle this. And then what happened? And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, in a, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now he went on back to heaven. To wait on the second coming to come back and do all of this. To reverse this curse and take us home and do what they ask. Restore the kingdom to Israel. Go ahead. And while they looked steadfastly toward the heaven, toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Uh -huh. Which also said, ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Uh -huh. This same Jesus. The same Jesus. Not, not somebody like Jesus or impersonate Jesus. The same Jesus. These angels told them what he going to do. Which is taken up from you uh, into heaven shall, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The same Jesus that's going to heaven right now. They saw him go up in the clouds. They were still looking up there. He said, they said he coming back the same way. Hmm. And he coming back even to the mountain he left. Zechariah 14 tell you he's going to land on the Mount of Olives. Right. That's what he said, verse 12. But we're going to Micah 4 and got one more after this. But his agenda is to reverse the curse of this people that's been scattered in slavery worldwide. Bring us home and make us a mighty nation all over again. That's why they said, will you restore the kingdom now? Micah 4 and 1, read it. But in the last days, it shall come to pass. And we in the last days. We just ain't got to these last days. We on our way there. See, today, we know we in the last days. We see the signs. But today is not the last day. We got some more last. Even when Jesus comes, that's going to be the end of the world as we know it. Then he restoring the kingdom to Israel. So in other words, understand when he say last days, these days he talking about are beyond us. It shall come to pass in the last days. What's going to come to pass? Go ahead. That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountain. Uh -huh. And it shall be exalted above the hill. Uh -huh. And people shall flow into it. In other words, God will rule over everybody. His government. He going to do what they asked in Acts 1. He going to restore the kingdom to Israel. Israel going to run it. Go ahead. And many nations shall come and say, come. Let us go up unto the mountain of the Lord uh -huh. and to the house of the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And he will teach us his way uh -huh. and, we, and we will walk in his path. Uh -huh. So the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The law going to go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. All nations going to come and get a little piece of it. Learn what they need to do. Go ahead. And he shall judge among many people uh -huh. and rebuke strong nations He's going to put off. these strong nations in their place. All of them. Go ahead. And they shall beat their swords in the plowshare. When the Lord get through with them, they ain't going to think about no war no more. They ain't going to want to make no more bombs, no more nothing. He going he gonna to destroy the nuclear arsenal that they got. 
They ain't going to think about it no more. So that's why he's using that analogy, beating their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. Why? Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they, shall, neither shall they learn war anymore. We know we ain't got here yet. Verse 4. But they shall sit every man under his vine. Everybody going to go to their own country and chill out. And the only thing you're going to be concerned about is having enough to eat. Like people starving now, but they got all kind of bombs. That don't make no sense. People in hurricanes can't get water. Can't, how you can't get people water and food that been through some devastation and you got all kind of bombs? Right. And he even got people filming the destruction. Like I say all the time, man, sell the camera and give them something. Hmm. Go ahead. And under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. It's going to be peace. Go ahead. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts have spoken it. Uh-huh. For all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. See, that's, what we, that's what's going on right now. Everybody walking in the name of their God. And even in Israel, we messed up right now. But those would know, we know the only God that matters is our God. Praise For all Lord. people will walk in the name, everyone in the name of his God. But us, go ahead. And we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Because he the only one. Go ahead. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halted. Uh, he going to assemble her that's halted. Talking about Israel. That's us. He going to assemble us. See, that's going to be an amazing feat. He going to assemble a people that scattered worldwide, speaking different languages, everything. But we all Israel, wherever we at. And we, we got a bad ailment now. We cursed. That's why he said, I will assemble her that halted. Halted mean like you, you limping. You messed up. Right. We stumbling all over the world. He said, I'm on him assemble her that halted. And what? And I will gather her that is driven out. That's us. And He's her. And gathering. I will gather her that is driven out. Go ahead. And her that I have afflicted. God have afflicted us. We are that woman. Go ahead. And I will make her that haunted the remnant uh -huh. and her that, that was cast, afar, cast far off a strong nation. See, the disciples knew this, brothers and sisters. So they asked Jesus, are you going to do this now? Will you restore the kingdom to Israel now? Because they knew that that's the Messiah's job. I will make her that haunted the remnant and her that was cast afar off a strong nation. Go ahead. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. I wish the preacher say to tell your neighbor that. Hmm. Go ahead. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, uh -huh. unto thee shall, shall it come, uh -huh. even the first dominion. Unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. God's dominion is going to rule over all other dominions when he come back and take this thing over. That's why they said, will you restore it now? And the angel said, look, Jesus told him it ain't for you to know. Then the angel said, look, he coming back. That's when he going to do that. That's what the message was. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. Go ahead. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Thy, he said, pray thy kingdom come, didn't he? The disciples knew that. They just didn't know when. This is when the curse is reversed and we going home. Zephaniah 3. This is it. I tried not to put this in. I said, I'm going to end it at Micah. I said, ah, no. I couldn't help myself. Zephaniah 3. But we're going to get to the physical food. But at least we know what we're celebrating, brothers and sisters. What we're enjoying this meal for. We're celebrating the Sabbath day. That's why we have a holy convocation and resting. But we also celebrating. This is the third day of this Feast of Tabernacles or end gathering. Point to the time when he's going to bring us from under this curse and gather us and take us home. Zephaniah 3 and 14. Go ahead. Sing, O daughter of Zion. See, it's something to sing and show for now. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Go ahead. Shout, O Israel. Uh-huh. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Why? Why is this? Why is this? Be happy now. Go ahead. The Lord have taken away thy judgment. He have cast out thine enemy. Mm -hmm. The Lord, the King of Israel, even the Lord, is 
in the midst of thee, thou shalt not see evil anymore. Anymore. Go ahead. In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. Why? The Lord thy God, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Uh -huh. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Uh -huh. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. See, he gonna gather us for the, this is gonna this occasion that we celebrating is pointing to what he gonna do. When we had a solemn assembly in the end, when he bring us together, he going to gather them that are sorrowful. See, we in a sorrow situation right now. Right. We're sorry people. We messed up right now. But he said, I'm going to gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Go ahead. Who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden? See, we know enough to know this predicament that we in is not right, it's messed up. And we saddened by it. We understand what it's about. See, he ain't gonna, everybody not going to make it because they ain't going to want to do what he said do. But go ahead. Behold, at that time I will undo all, the, all that afflict thee. Well, the Lord know how to use some words. You know, you know, that's just like Israel too. You know, the Lord is Israel for real. He be, he be using words. We be talking around the Gentiles. They don't even understand what, the, what we talking about. Hey, we said, man, that's bad. Hey, we said, that's not good. No, nah, it's good. <laughs> that's what bad means. You know, nowadays people would say, well, you know, I'm going to do them. The Lord said, no, nah, I'm going to undo them. <laughs> that means I'm going to do them. Right. <laughs> that's what he said. He said, behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee. See, the Lord, the Bible, people haven't paid attention. The Bible said we the apple of God's eye. Mm -hmm. So it, people that's doing us sin, they're going to pay for it. Right. That's why I ain't got to be mad and hate the Gentiles or nothing. Look, I feel sorry for the ones that don't get their act together because the Lord is going to undo them. Mm -hmm. He said, I will undo all that afflict thee. That means somebody been oppressing us even down here in slavery, right? Go ahead. And I will save her that, that halted. There go that halted again. I will save her that halted. Go ahead. And gather her that was driven out. And gather her that was driven out. Go ahead. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. That's something else, isn't it? Who, who put the shame in this land? And as far as the relationship of the people, we know we messed up with God. I ain't done nothing to the Gentile. Like I said before, I ain't done nothing to the KKK. Huh. I don't even know what they mad about. Right. I ain't done nothing to them. Right. But I know we sinned against God, but we put to shame because of that. Right. It ain't that I've done nothing. we done nothing to the Gentile. They act like we have. Right. But they done done something to us. So he telling you he going to reverse the curse, brothers and sisters. Hmm. He said, I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Who is put to shame in this land? We are. Only us. Bad stuff happened to everybody, but we put to shame. Right. Go ahead. Verse 20, and this is it. At that time, will I bring you again? We going home. Go ahead. Even in the time that I have gathered you. Uh-huh. For I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. Everybody going to know. Go ahead. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. When I turn back your slavery. And we still in slavery, aren't we? I can't, it's hard to make black folks realize it. But they're going to get it one day. Hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs> and now without further ado, we just going to... Uh, Stand and face Jerusalem and, and, and have a prayer. Well, I'm going to mention two things, a couple of things. We got a baptism next Sabbath. We're going to have a baptism. I think Brother Nate and them going to have one in Atlanta. That's another thing. Also, uh, I got to mention we got a special visitor. We got Sister Mildred <laughs> from Philadelphia and her husband. <laughs> we hate to put people on the spot, but if you want to stand, stand, go on, stand up. So we know who y'all. Hey. So we're glad to have them. You know, Sister Mildred, she, 
before we had a brother that handled things down in Sister Mildred, Sister Mildred kept things together. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So uh, we're glad to have him here. And now we're going to go ahead and stand and face Jerusalem. And I'm just going to ask to expedite things, Brother Nehemiah, to bless the food. Then he's going to close out with the prayer. But uh, we, we can get to eating. Everybody got some. If you don't have nothing, we got plenty, so don't worry about it. We got plenty for everybody. Got some of everything, too. That's why we got rid of the menu. We used to have a menu. People get mad. Well, I want so-and-so. Now you say you want so-and-so, you know what we tell you? Bring it. I get some. Let me taste so-and-so, too. <laughs> Go ahead. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, God, we pray, we, we, we thank you, Lord, for, for making our hearts glad with today's message, Lord. Thank you for the Sabbath, uh, the, your Sabbath, Lord, that, that we've received the spiritual food, Lord, for the nourishment of our hearts and our minds. Now, Lord God, we ask you bless the physical food for, us, for our physical bodies, Lord, that it be nourished to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, power. And the, glory. And the glory, forever. forever. Praise, the Praise the Lord, for he is good, for, he is good. for, his, mercy for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, the Lord God of Israel. For, he is good. for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. For In Jesus' name we pray. The Holy One of Israel, the mighty God. The gatherer of Israel, the, of Israel. The, prince of the prince of peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.